Thank you so much. I am absolutely <laughs> delighted um, to be able to participate and present in this important forum. Um, it is a little intimidating to go after such a dynamic presentation and dynamic presenter. However, um, I'm going to tell you um, a little bit about what I do. My academic degrees are in medical genetics and my postdoctoral training is in genetic epidemiology. I thought I'd start by giving you um, the classic definition for um, genetic epidemiology. It's a fairly new discipline, first defined in 1978 um, as a science that deals with the etiology, distribution, and control of disease in groups of relatives and with inherited causes of disease in populations. The definition has evolved over the years, um, but inherited causes of disease and hereditary conditions are key concepts in genetic epidemiology and medical genetics. They are, however, not new concepts. Descriptions of inheritance existed from ancient times. Avicenna, in his Canon of Medicine, noted hereditary transmission as one mode by which a disease may be transmitted from one person to another. He named several diseases of the time which he believed had hereditary components. We now know genes as the unit of heredity. Genes are segments of DNA which code for proteins which perform most of life functions. In humans, DNA is organized into 46 chromosomes made up of 3 billion subunits, those are the four nucleotides or bases of DNA, which are the alphabet of DNA. It is the combination of these four nucleotides that makes up the sequence of the genes. In humans, there are approximately 30,000 protein coding genes. Mutations in the genes, meaning changes in the sequence of these genes, lead to defective proteins and that can cause disease. If these genetic mutations and chromosomal abnormalities are present in germ cells, they can get transmitted from the parent to the offspring. It is the segregation of genetic mutations and chromosomal defects from one generation to the next, which explains hereditary um, diseases. As shown in this pedigree, in medical genetics and genetic epidemiology, we collect pedigrees on patients and research participants. They summarize diseases that segregate in the family. They also reflect shared genetic and environmental risk factors by relatives. This pedigree shows an affected man, the symbols are below, who passed on the disease and the genetic mutation to some of his offspring, who then in turn passed it on to their offspring. Avicenna was not aware of these genetics um, concepts. However, he foreshadowed the field of medical genetics through several topics. Besides hereditary diseases, Avicenna described temperament. He provided an explanation for congenital malformations. And he classified diseases based on etiology or causation of the disease into two groups, simple and complex diseases. Avicenna noted uniqueness of the temperament of each individual as indicating that each microcosm or constitution um, be unique and not identical with any other. We now know that the uniqueness of each individual is partially due to the unique genetic makeup of each person. Avicenna also noted the similarities between constitution and temperaments, particularly between people of the same ethnic groups. This is also in line with modern um, genetic concepts of ethnic specific variations and genetic distance between populations. 
Genetic distance is defined as the degree of genomic divergence between populations and is a measure that's used in evolutionary genetics and phylogenetic studies such as this, looking at populations and how similar or dissimilar they are from one another with respect to the overall genomic sequences. If you look at the North Eurasian ancestral population, the Caucasoid branch, you see that Iranians share greater genetic similarity with Southwest Asians and Europeans uh, than they do with some of their immediate geographic neighbors. Avicina emphasized the importance of determining the etiology or cause of disease and classified diseases into simple versus complex. Simple diseases, he stated, are those which have a single abnormality of temperament. Complex diseases are those in which two or more components combine to form the disease. In medical genetics, we classify diseases into simple or single gene disorders, and complex or multifactorial disorders. Single gene disorders are inherited conditions with a mutation in a gene which confers a very high risk of disease on the carriers of the mutation. Examples of single gene disorders, also known as Mendelian disorders, include cystic fibrosis, Huntington disease, and hereditary forms of many cancers. Multifactorial disorders are caused as the result of genetic environment interaction. They have many causal components, which include several genetic and environmental factors. Examples of multi multifactorial conditions include cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and common or garden variety form of most cancers. In medical genetics, uh, we believe that nearly all diseases in humans are caused due to interaction between genetic and environmental factors. Environmental factors play a role in predisposition to single gene disorders. Similarly, diseases with a known, with a major environmental or non-genetic cause, such as HIV infection, AIDS, um, are impacted by genetic factors in terms of their predisposition, severity, as well as response to treatments. Most of my research is focused on identifying and quantifying the various genetic and environmental components that play a role in predisposition to cancer as well as to cancer progression. In my lab, we work on hereditary cancer syndromes as well as the common forms of cancer. In this presentation, I'm going to briefly tell you about some of our studies on hereditary breast and ovarian cancer. First, some statistics. Breast cancer is the most common reported female cancer worldwide. In the United States, there will be an estimated 231,000 new cases of female breast cancer in 2015. It is the second leading cause of death due to cancer there will be an estimated 40,000 deaths in the U.S. in 2015 among women, 440 among men due to breast cancer. The lifetime risk of breast cancer is 12%. That is one in eight women in the U.S. will develop breast cancer by age 70. Besides age, family history is the most significant risk factor for breast cancer that is family history of breast and ovarian cancer. The majority of breast cancer cases in any given population are common or sporadic. About 10 to 15 percent of bre breast cancer cases in any given population are hereditary, meaning that they're due to segregation of a single gene with mutations that confer very high risk of breast and ovarian cancer. Um, some of the genes um, that lead to hereditary breast cancer have been identified. Mutations in two genes, the BRCA1 and BRCA2, which stand for the first and the second breast cancer genes identified, um, account for 80% of hereditary cases of breast cancer. Mutations in the same BRCA genes account for about 90% of hereditary cases of ovarian cancer in any given population, and up to 20% of ovarian cancer cases in any population are estimated to be hereditary. 
thousands of mutations in the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes have been identified which affect the protein function predisposing to breast and ovarian cancer. Ethnic specific mutations, um, if there is a way of expanding the slides, um, it would help. Um, I don't know if the gentleman in the back hears me. Um, ethnic specific mutations in the BRCA genes have also been identified. Uh, the, the mutation names um, are supposed to be in a column here. But these are some of the populations in which um, mutations in the BRCA1 and 2 have been identified. The characteristics of ethnic specific mutations are that they occur at a very high frequency in those populations. Um, and they are unique in some cases to those populations. Um, they include uh, French Canadian, some of the populations that we, we have studied, Ashkenazi, Jewish, Icelandic, and the Dutch population. Um, we have conducted um, genetic epidemiologic studies on many populations and ethnic groups, the majority of which are in North America and Europe. The objectives um, of these studies have been several fold. I'm going to focus on three of the objectives of our genetic epi studies for this presentation. One is to identify the BRCA mutations in each of the populations and determine the frequency of the mutations in the population and the penetrance, which is the risk of the mutation for, for given cancers in that population. The second objective is to identify other genetic factors as well as environmental factors which may modify the risk associated with BRCA mutations for cancer. And the third is to determine the histopathologic features of the BRCA positive tumors um, compared to sporadic tumors and to compare the survival outcomes of BRCA carriers with breast and ovarian cancer to sporadic cases of breast and ovarian cancer. Our findings um, from our studies um, have led to um, an understanding of the biologic mechanisms involved in the disease pathology, but have also provided etiologic clues for developing and offering preventive and risk reduction strategies to individuals who carry these mutations. Without getting into the details of the studies, I'm going to summarize our findings with respect to each of those objectives. So with regards to objective one, um, in our studies we have found that up to 40% of ovarian cancer cases and 20% of breast cancer cases in certain populations carry a mutation in the BRCA gene, and those are cancer cases unselected for age or a family history of the disease. The frequency of a BRCA mutation in a given population, in some population, reaches as high as 2.5 to 3%. That means that in the general population, among unaffected individuals, about 3% carry these mutations. Up to 60% of BRCA carrier um, cancer cases, in fact, do not have a significant family history um, of the disease. Um, and therefore they would not have been identified as being at risk. And BRCA carriers have a significantly lower age of onset of breast and ovarian cancer than non-carriers. Um, the majority of breast and ovarian cancers associated with BRCA mutations are uh, premenopausal as opposed to perimenopausal and postmenopausal um, in women in the average population. The precise risk estimates uh, for BRCA mutations differ by the type of study and the exact genetic mutation. This slide summarizes our findings with respect to the risk of cancer associated with these mutations. The lifetime risk of BRCA mutations for breast cancer can reach as high as 85%. For ovarian cancer, as high as 60% lifetime, that's by age 70. There are also risks of colorectal cancer for both men and women who carry BRCA mutations, prostate cancer, and male breast cancer. To put the elevation in risk in perspective, the 85% risk associated with BRCA mutations for breast cancer is compared to the 12% risk for breast cancer in an average woman in the general population. The 85% the 60% risk of ovarian cancer is compared to 1.4% risk of ovarian cancer in the woman in the general population. So these mutations confer very high risk of cancer. Um, 
I am going to, because I was just told that I have five minutes, um, I would like to talk about um, the study that we did in the Iranian populations. As I said before, most of our studies are concentrated in populations in North America. But I wanted to expand our studies investigations to understudied populations, such as some of some Middle Eastern populations. Um, so I, um, in collaboration with colleagues at University of Tehran and University of Toronto, we collected a series of um, hereditary breast and ovarian cancer cases. Um, from hospitals and a medical genetics clinic in Tehran. This is an example of one such family with multiple cases of ovarian cancer, early onset premenopausal breast cancer. Um, in this family, we identified a novel BRCA1 mutation. Um, this mutation um, leads to a truncated protein um, causing breast cancer um, and ovarian cancer. Based on this finding, we can offer individuals in this family, unaffected individuals in this family, um, genetic testing. And individuals who are found to be positive for BRCA mutations, um, they can um, be given several um, strategies or options for reducing their risk of breast and ovarian cancer. Those include lifestyle changes, chemo prevention, increased surveillance for breast and ovarian cancer, as well as prophylactic mastectomy or, or oophorectomy, that's removal of breast and ovaries in order to reduce the risk. We have published this finding in several forums because we don't know the frequency of this mutation. This mutation had never been uh, reported in any population, so I reported it to the uh, BRCA Information Core, which is a database of um, uh, BRCA mutations at the NIH as a, an Iranian mutation that needs to be investigated. We don't know the frequency of this mutation in Iran, um, and we don't know if there are other mutations that may have a high frequency of Iran. Um, in order to form collaborations, we have also published our findings on um, our studies in Iran in, in genetic journals that are published um, there, such as this one, uh, which is genetics in the third millennium. Um, and I am, um, we are also working on sporadic, we're hoping to expand our studies to sporadic or common forms of cancer in understudied populations, in populations that we are currently studying that had already been worked up for hereditary breast cancer, we're finding that a large fraction of sporadic cases are in fact due to low risk but common genetic variations and that gene-gene and gene-environment interactions play significant roles. Um, I guess I will go to my conclusion slide at this point. Um, just to conclude, Avicina was unaware um, of genes as units of inheritance. However, through careful observations and descriptions of hereditary conditions, classifications of disease and congenital malformations, and speculations on inter-individual differences in disease predisposition and response to treatment, um, his contributions were relevant to medical genetics. A millennium later, we have made great, amazing strides in understanding the biologic basis for those early observations, but also in elucidating the mechanism involved in not only single gene disorders, but also complex disorders with multiple genetic and environmental factors. Seminal discoveries such as the, the, um, the, the determination of the structure of DNA by Watson, Crick, and Rosalind Franklin, mapping and sequencing of the human genome in an international effort led by Dr. Francis Collins, um, have um, led us to um, envisioning a future for medicine, uh, which has been predicted to be genomics-based in the 21st century. Uh, the NIH director recently articulated his vision for transformation of medicine in the 21st century as saying, I predict that comprehensive genomics-based healthcare will become the norm with individualized preventive medicine and early detection of illnesses. Um, those were my collaborators and students um, for some of the data that I didn't get a chance to show you. Um, and this is my final slide, pictures of some of the um, cities I worked in. I initiated these studies in Vancouver, Montreal, Toronto, Washington, and Albany, which some of you may not know, is the capital of the state of New York. Thank you so much.